Welcome into K-State Online. I'm Mason Voth, joined by Derek Young. Here we are, Jones AT&T Stadium in Lubbock, where the Wildcats have won yet again. Texas Tech, I hate to break it to you, you're kind of turning into KU and Iowa State. I mean, it's never the easiest of wins, but the Cats have a tough time losing to Texas Tech, at least in football. Uh, I mean, United Supermarkets Arena has kind of become a house of horrors in basketball, but we're talking football now because the Cats are back in the win column, a 38-21 to victory over the Red Raiders tonight. It was a tight game at halftime. K-State had a couple of momentum swings in that first half that maybe the league could have been bigger. The targeting penalty on Jake Clifton spurred Tech on to a touchdown, but they had to come out with their – third string quarterback in the second half also a true freshman and uh, when it came to dueling true freshman quarterbacks tonight Avery Johnson was the clear winner and that's got to be the number one place that we start tonight it was an early balance between Will Howard and Avery Johnson Will got the first two series I believe and then Avery Johnson came in on the third immediately led K-State down to a touchdown drive they kind of jockeyed back and forth they had a drive where they both kind of came in Will Howard had a nice road to Ben Senate Avery Johnson finished it off with a touchdown run but in the second half. Avery Johnson, once he got the, that crack on the second or third drive, he took it and ran with it. We didn't see Will Howard the rest of the game. Uh, first, the thoughts on Avery Johnson's performance, and then at the end of that, you can throw in what this means moving forward for the Wildcats. Yeah, obviously they felt like the QB run game was going to be a powerful asset to them throughout the night just because of the looks that they were getting from Texas Tech, and if you're going to go QB run, you might as well roll with Avery Johnson. So I think that played into the decision a little bit, and at the end of the day, they were scoring their touchdowns when Avery Johnson was in the game. So that played into the decisions a little bit. Five touchdowns on the ground for number five. I think a lot of them are in this end zone behind us, not necessarily the one in, in front of us. So he dominated, I think, one side of the field a little bit more than the other. I I wanted them to le- allow him to let it rip through the air a little bit more than they did. But they were probably smart and probably going with just what it took to win the game, which meant we probably don't have to pass the ball to win the game. Now, that's not a sexy brand of football, but Chris Kleiman's going to go with the winning brand of football, even if it is not sexy. Uh, I asked some of the players after the game. I asked Trayshawn Ward. I asked Cooper Beebe. You know, mostly all we've seen is Avery run it. What's the ceiling of potential when it comes to his his arm? And I said, oh, don't you worry. You'll see that uh, sooner rather than later as well. So, you know, And for Texas Tech fans, you kind of got into that a little bit. Uh, Obviously, the fact that they lose to Kansas State every year is probably not a great situation for them. I think they've lost 10 of 11. Uh, So if you want to go back that far, it's really um, a series that's not very enjoyable for the Red Raider faithful. And to probably compound matters even more, you basically got a side-by-side comparison of one team's true freshman quarterback to yours and one's going for five rushing touchdowns and taking care of the ball the other is throwing reckless ball after reckless ball he did have a good run Mm -hmm. jake strong and interestingly enough kansas state did consider um and targeted him a little bit and they chose to hey well we're gonna see this through and wait this thing out with avery i think that was probably much to the dismay of jake strong so he went ahead and committed to texas tech instead of waiting for kansas state to offer him um, and he probably found out tonight why Kansas State chose to do that. Yeah, believe it or not, I think K-State, at least for now, they they won that decision-making battle. Uh, yeah, you talk about Avery Johnson. On the ground, he ran for 90 yards, 13 carries, five touchdowns. Treshawn Ward goes over 100 on the ground, and there was a good dynamic with what Avery Johnson can do running, and they had a focus so hard on him being Texas Tech that Treshawn Ward got even more opportunities in the second half for some things to open up and – uh, on t- top of Will, you know, talking about Avery Johnson's passing, because Will Howard didn't throw the ball poorly tonight. Just the offense kind of, you know, stalled and staled at times, and he was able to to still be effective in moments. But Avery Johnson was eight of nine for seventy seven yards. Yeah, Avery threw the ball efficiently. I hope moving forward we see more of that. But I don't think Will Howard lost the opportunity or or the playing time tonight. I think Avery Johnson just went and got it. But Will Howard's throw in the third quarter to Ben Sinnott, was that mm-hmm. the third quarter? That really, Chris Chris Kleiman mentioned. Sec, that was second quarter, yeah. Okay. Um, that, that really got them going on one of their drives. I think it was the touchdown drive that they shared. So Chris Kleiman mentioned that ball, and I, I think that was a pretty big play as well. And, you, you know, you alluded to it earlier, the just the unfortunate sequence that I think some of it was just a product of bad luck. You got the, the targeting on Jake Clifton to 
not only takes away a turnover that you had created, um, probably gives them an extra 15 yards, a first down, and an opening to, to score the football and kind of dominate that middle middle eight that, that, that for analytical purposes. And without that, so then this, this game's not close. Yeah, I mean, that's where the majority of Tech's points came from in this game. They end up scoring 21. 14 of them came in that middle eight, and that's kind of what the, the trick was for them. But K-State locked in. It was the one big run they gave up in the third quarter to Strong when he came in, but they, they locked down after that. And the big thing was they were able to answer with an Avery Johnson touchdown, and then the very first play, V.J. Payne gets a big interception, and that was kind of like busting the floodgates open for the K-State defense because it showed, hey, this guy's going to be reckless with the football the very next play, Avery Johnson took in for another touchdown, and that's when you start to go, okay, this thing might be getting to the point where it's over. Kobe Savage got a pick. He almost had another one that ends up getting called back on review. It did hit the ground, but it didn't matter because later on that drive, uh, he made an even tougher play with his second interception of the night for the third turnover that K-State forced. And really, it was a culmination of a lot of things tonight that had been flaws for K-State, where the defense was not forcing turnovers. They forced three of them tonight. K-State doesn't give any of their own away they're able to comfortably win. They also were able to execute by scoring numerous touchdowns when they started to move the ball down the field. And that had been a struggle at times, or at least making it look easy. So they came through in that regard, and they made enough things happen tonight to, to kind of pull away from Texas Tech. Now, def go ahead. I'll let you uh, you're a baseball guy. Oh, yes. So I, I, I kind of had a funny moment with Kobe Savage. I asked him, I was like, how much are you going to hear about this uh, dropping that what should have been a second interception? I was, and he just kind of looked down, and all of a sudden he's like, you know, I wasn't a baseball player. I wouldn't have played the outfield either. So, uh, and then, then, to be honest, he turned that in for, you know, someone took a, a stray there, and then he said V.J. Payne can't catch. Uh, V.J. Payne caught, caught his in. He had a catch of the night. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, well, well, real quick, talking about catches, we'll talk about the defense in a second, but the receivers, I mean, not a ton of opportunities tonight. I think K-State ends up only throwing, what's 18 passes in the game. But we did start to see, you know, Jace Brown came in, caught a big pass from Avery Johnson. Phillip Brooks went up and caught a ball early. And funny enough, we had talked about it on the way here about, you know, seeing guys with jump balls in other games throughout the day. It's like, when is the last time K-State did that? A guy like Phillip Brooks, 5'8", he's probably not going to do that. He did that in the first half, and it helped on K-State's scoring drive to open it up. So uh, what did you make of the receivers making maybe a stride in this game? Because not a ton of opportunities. I think that still says a lot about how this team feels. There's not a ton of confidence in the receivers, but maybe some things moving forward that you can start to believe in. You know, I'll be honest, probably not a lot in terms of a step forward or significant strides, at least nothing noticeable. But I do think a positive takeaway would be that they didn't have any catastrophic errors. So eliminating the mistakes is probably a step in the right direction. Yeah, and that's, that's absolutely true. I'll be honest, Jace Brown popping through. You know what was probably the most satisfying in terms of what Jace Brown did is not only showing up in – you know, making a dent, making an impact on a road game in front of a, you know, this was a packed house and a fun atmosphere tonight. Um, but doing it, not just catching one ball, hopefully, you know, that becomes more and more. But, man, he, you would think for a true freshman, you know, it's probably hard to see the field as much as you want because you're not as good of a blocker. One, because you don't understand the schemes as much. And two, you're not as big as everybody else yet because you haven't been in a uh, – you know, a weight program like this for very much or for as long as the other guys. But dude, he might have been the best blocker in the night. Avery Johnson was obviously, you know, great when it came to, to running the ball. Adrian Martinez had a lot of success on the ground against Texas Tech last year. I think he and Deuce Vaughn were both well over 100 yards in that game in Manhattan, so that translated to this year. Defensively for K-State tonight, the sack numbers maybe not there, but it felt like they got good pressure early. And honestly, you know, people were probably asking, where's Baron Morton? Khalid Duke popped him pretty good very early in the first quarter, and he got up. And there was a wobble and a little wooziness to it. And I was shocked that they didn't stop it and check him out. I, it's almost one where, like, in the NFL they have the independent, you know, guy watching. They probably would have buzzed down and said, you got to get him off the field and take a look. He didn't play in the second half. 
I didn't see him on the sideline. I mean, you know, who knows what happened? It could be a myriad of other things. It seems likely that that hit did it, but there was a lot of pressure there. Tech quarterbacks were having to roll out quite a bit, and they made bad decisions when they did that. And then, you know, guys stepped up in other areas. The tackling was maybe still a little suspect, and the ball tracking at times is not good, obviously by Kobe Savage and some other moments in the game. But this defense, they stepped it up a little bit more tonight. Yeah, ball skills, ball tracking has to improve. Tackling definitely has to improve. I bet Chris Kleiman is very pissed off because he's a guy that likes to pride his defense on tackling. And they're not getting it done in that regard. And a few of those linebackers, he probably expects more out of, to be quite honest. But to be fair, those linebackers are playing a lot of snaps right now because they're running out of linebackers. Um, because it happens every year. It seems like all your injuries, everything that happens always happens to, to one group. And for the, some reason, this year that's the linebackers. But what I will say is you're right. Maybe they didn't complete the sacks tonight. But, you know, sacks are great because it's a negative play. You take away yardage for the other team. But just affecting the quarterback, you can do it in a myriad of ways. That's why pressures count, hurries count, hits count. And they beat the crap out of the kid, both kids. Yeah. Um, so that matters and a turnover. So I'd say they beat the crap out of the quarterbacks and took away the ball. You do that, you probably win. I keep, people probably wonder why you keep touching your face. There was a, like a spider web that just floated through here. And, you know, I'm, I – I want to say I have arachnophobia, but I definitely don't like those suckers. Uh, so we'll get ready to get out of here and finish things off because it's a win. Everybody wants to be positive. Uh, we'll probably get home at 2 a.m. too. So Yeah, yeah. Not home. Well, <laughs> back to the hotel. Uh, shout out to KSU underscore fan. Be awake, son. We're coming for you. Drew and I record the podcast. Um, thinking about how things went, one last thing on the defense. Taj Brooks still ends up 98 yards, okay. close to six uh, uh, you know, per carry. But it did feel like they did a good enough job of slowing him down, and he – wasn't able to control the game like it could have been possible for Tech to do. Yeah, um, they hit him at the line of scrimmage or behind the line of scrimmage a lot, so they deserve credit for that. <laughs> Excuse me. They were getting off blocks and getting there. They got to tackle. He got his yards because they couldn't tackle. Yeah. All right, next week the Cats finally return home. It's been uh, it's been a long time. Yeah, almost a month, uh, three weeks. They've uh, been away, either a bye week or two on the road now. They face a TCU team that we were ready to call them dead after they lost to Iowa State. This is a common theme in the Big 12. Just when you want to kill a team, they come back to life. We're going to start calling this the Lazarus League. So they come through, dominate BYU. K-State has a, a double-digit win on the road in Lubbock. What do we expect next week from K-State and TCU and what that means now? But first, you got to answer, who's the starting quarterback next week? For, for me, I would start Avery Johnson. I don't know that's what Kansas State will do. Obviously, for Coach Kleiman, he was kind of asked what they do from here. He said that's something that they'll discuss every week and that they have two good quarterbacks that they trust, and both Will Howard and Avery Johnson, and that's only both of them. So the non-committed answer, answer, which is to be expected immediately after the game, um, I don't think you can make these broad, sweeping uh, personnel decisions and announce it to the world without having meetings with those kids because I think it's fair to have that conversation first. So if there is an announcement of some sort, I doubt we get one this week, but I would say it would probably come on Tuesday after some conversations and meetings can be conducted. I doubt we get anything. So, uh, for me, I, I would say it's Avery Johnson. In terms of going forward um, next week, what do I expect? I, I, have, I have absolutely no clue. Uh, you said it yourself. The Big 12 is about as unpredictable as everything. Uh, usually the teams that play the best – each week are the ones that laid an egg the prior week. So whoever crapped the bed tonight, they'll probably play well next week. So, hey, put your money on Texas Tech, I guess. Well, and the good news is uh, it's not like any of the new schools next year are unpredictable because Colorado, they were fine this week, I'm pretty sure. I think they took care of business, right? So, yeah. Hey, Arizona beat Washington State. What? Uh, yeah, I mean, Arizona, who, who would have thought? Uh, they did not play Adrian Delora tonight, though. They went with the uh, uh, Jaden Delora, yeah, Adrian Delora, and, and, uh, also an Arizona kid. Uh, yeah, all these guys out there. It's late in Lubbock. Uh, it's time to get out of here. I would say the right answer is to start Avery Johnson next week. 
that doesn't mean that that is going to be the correct answer in terms of what Chris Kleiman does. But I think it's clear. There were some moments after the game you could kind of just tell whether it was, you know, you know Avery Johnson walking off or Colin Klein and Chris Kleiman in different moments. That this is this is a pivotal moment for K-State and what they're going to decide, not just for this season and moving forward. And if you think about it, if this was any other team in any other circumstance, Avery Johnson is undoubtedly the guy. The tricky part about all this, though, is Will Howard played really good last year. He led you to a Big 12 title, and he's outside of one awful game against Oklahoma State, he hasn't been horrendous this year. There are a lot of other factors that play into offensive struggles, but tonight it was Avery Johnson, and obviously those legs and what he can do gives you a big benefit moving forward. And they're in a really good spot now. Uh, just like we said, they were one of those teams that were like, you know, I, I talked to someone on Sirius XM radio on our way down here, and they called this game the loser leaves town game. Kind of makes sense. The loser's probably effectively eliminated from the Big 12 title hunt, and unfortunately for Texas Tech, that's them. Kansas State, on the other hand, 2-1, and one, you're still effectively in the Big 12 title hunt. You're going to need a little help, I would think. And, well, actually, you went out, you're probably in because you beat Texas, but we'll see what happens. But they put themselves in a golden opportunity. People got pissed off at me throughout this week because they kept talking about this game having Big 12 title implications. I still think that it does um, because if you lose, you have zero. Now you still have a little bit of a live, and you get into a season or like a part of the season similar to what Texas Tech had just before playing Kansas State, where you're playing gettable teams in really good spots. They whacked Houston, they whacked Baylor. Well, Kansas State gets TCU and Houston, two teams that they should that they will be. I wouldn't say overwhelming favorites, but they're going to be comfortable favorites against both of those teams at home. And I mean, you think about it too with kind of how that ends up playing out and yeah yeah backup quarterback for TCU but uh, this year's been the backup quarterback. yeah you're the backup uh Oklahoma State surprisingly the team that played every quarterback they had on the roster was the only one that didn't play a backup quarterback basically this season against K-State uh yeah, this is this is big for K State, and until you know, as long as they take care of business in those home games, until we get an outcome against Texas for the Wildcats, they are legitimately back in this race, and they can do a lot of things. And the team that played tonight, if they do everything they did here, they are going to give themselves an opportunity to do that, even as bad and ugly as the first, you know, now six games of the season have been up until this point. So we'll see how it goes. Ironically, K State still leaving a ta- leaving town tonight except they won, so that's good. Texas Tech staying in town, but they did leave the Big 12 title race, so they are the tough luck losers uh, in this race in the Big 12. 38-21, the final score from Lubbock. Avery Johnson ties Colin Klein and Jonathan Beasley's rushing touchdown record for a single game with five. Neither of those guys did it as true freshmen, though. That was pointed out by Kenny Lanou after the game. So and Coach Kleiman wanted to know. <laughs> yeah, Coach Kleiman wanted to know. Uh, so that was, uh, that was good. Avery Johnson, obviously a hot start, and that will be the topic for a long time to come, and we'll see what everything brings. Another night game next week in Bill Snyder Family Stadium for the Cats and the Frogs. That will do it for Derek Young and myself, Mason Voth, here from Lubbock, Texas. Stay tuned to everything we got going on at K-State Online, all the post-game coverage from Drew and D.Y., as well as everything we'll have for you on the YouTube and podcast feeds right here.